Coming up on this special edition of How We Built It, we're joined by a leading fraud detection company in Brazil, ClearSale, helping customers across industries verify an average of half a million transactions daily. Now we're going to look at how they're looking to modernize their operational analytics data platform to include Azure Synapse so they can expand their machine learning and analytics for anomaly detection and operate at greater scale. So I'm joined today by Jelther Goncalves, who's a data engineer at ClearSail. Welcome. Thanks, Jeremy. It's great to be on the show. Thanks for joining us today. And by the way, before we get into this, just a quick recap if you're new to Azure Synapse. This is Microsoft's limitless analytics platform that really brings together data warehousing capabilities along with big data processing into a single service. And you can learn more at aka.ms slash mechanics synapse. So Jelther, how do you actually do all of this work now? So today we have a well-defined process that catches 99% of the cases. Uh, it works like this. During an online purchase, ClearSale is a read on action on the customer's website. We collect the information about the purchase and the behavior of the client. This last we call a fingerprint. One example of behavior information is the number of credit cards that the client tried to use. When this information arrives at ClearSale, we run machine learning models business rules, and historical data from different industries to check if the purchase is fraudulent or not. All this runs in a matter of seconds. For the other 1% of transactions that look suspicious, we'll have a manual analysis. This is led by our fraud experts at ClearSale. They will investigate deeper and, if needed, they will contact the person trying to make the purchase to prevent the fraud. Okay, so to date your solution, has it mainly been on-premises servers that you're running? Yes, but we're moving our operations to Azure's cloud, in fact. Today, we have different SQL Server on-premises instances that runs different jobs. In the past, when the number of transactions increased, we had to replicate data to new SQL Server instances to take care of it. You can see this is very manual and time-consuming. On the analytics side, since this information was very transactional and spread, our analysts had to do a lot of engineering work to transform and index the data for their needs. So what have been some of the challenges then for this approach? The main is scale. Since our data is doubling every two years, we weren't able to process everything with the performance we wanted. To support some of our work, we built batch processes for specific data sets to run outside work hours to avoid impact or response time. Also, fraud is a very dynamic event. A leak of data from one industry could affect other, and being able to correlate data with a good performance is essential for us. And being able to analyze the entirety of the data is also important, I think, for analytics. So what approach, then, are you taking to modernize your data architecture? We've taken some temporary steps to help with that. For our transactional operations, we've deployed Azure SQL Server hyperscale databases with replicas that receive data from our on-premises through custom pipelines. The data flow works like this. We read specific data sets from our on-premises databases, send them to Azure Event Hubs, and Azure Functions ingest this data into Hyperscale. From this point, we run machine learning models and business rules on a scalable database to score the fraud risk of the transactions. Some of them will score low and be success successful, other will trigger the manual analysis for further investigation. Also, this data is exposed through APIs for our services and end fraud management products. And here I can also see that you have data that's kind of running through Azure Synapse, right? Yes, well noted. At the same time, we're sending data to Azure Synapse, but in this case, we're not just using specific data sets, but sending all of it. We want to use the data warehousing capabilities of Synapse. And instead of using Azure Functions, now we are using Azure Databricks to deal with the massive amount of data. From Synapse, we can have the compute power and reduce processing time for our analytics work in a single environment with, a, with an infinite scale. This way, we can create, change, and enhance machine learning models features. Finally, the last step is to send this enhanced data to Azure SQL Server's hyperscale databases to be better at the fraud detection. OK, so you can store and work off a full pipeline. Now, you're able to separate the operational needs then from ongoing analytics work as well uh, to kind of improve fraud detection. But how did this improve then your batch processing? 
We had one scenario that usually took one week to complete, but on Synapse, the same execution took only six hours. Also, the major benefit now is that we can move into new areas with our analytics work and process correlations between data sets with a greater performance. These are, these are huge savings of time especially. So can we take a look at what you've done? Yes, sure. Uh, the good thing about Synapse is that we can use it for our favorite tools and notebooks to connect to it. In this case, I'm using Azure Data Studio in our existing Synapse environment. Here I have two major data sets from two different industries that I want to merge. So I'll click in the first data set and count it, and you'll see that it has around 151 million rows. Now in the second data set, I'll count it too, and we can see that it has more than 68 million rows. Let me cross these two data sets by the Brazilian ID number and sum all the purchases by this ID. Running this query takes around seven minutes, and we can see that we have around 31 million rows where the same person has made transactions across two different industries. Just to prove that it worked, we will get the first 100 rows against the aggregation, and you're going to be able to see the person ID and the sum of the transactions. So this is a dramatic reduction in time and a much better performance for correlating these two huge data sets. We weren't able to do this before, and now our data scientists and analysts will have faster insights. OK, awesome work. So we've seen the advantages that an increased uh, compute power brings. But uh, does Synapse also help with different styles of workloads that you're doing at, at ClearCell? Yes, it does. Uh, a motivator for us is being able to split the available resources between our data teams using workload group management. Here we are on the Azure portal in our existing environment and we can monitor the usage and how many queries are active. Sometimes uh, business needs may require different priorities. We have defined eight workload groups, which allow me to assign and track the consumption based on specific users and workloads. We have defined groups for our BI analysts, data scientists, data engineers, and others. What is great is that if a user has a permission, he or she can change their own workload group so a critical job can run in a group with more resources. Here we are assigning a different workload group to this BI job. Now, with this group assigned, I'm able to run it with more compute power. This is great to see. So where else are you going to go then at ClearSale with your Azure Synapse evaluation? We're expecting to use the masking capabilities of Synapse. Being able to do that in the row and column level is an important feature for us. Also, we are excited about using Synapse Studio. This is going to allow our analytics team to use not only the DW capabilities, but also use Spark, PySpark, and SQL on demand notebooks and pipelines. Thanks so much, Delther, for sharing your Azure Synapse evaluation with us. Now, by the way, if you liked hearing from ClearSale, please also check back to the rest of our How We Built It series at aka.ms slash Azure Synapse series to learn from early adopters of Azure Synapse. That's all the time we have for today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.